In this video, I'm going to show you how you can leverage GitHub Actions to easily run your background jobs periodically. So if you're using a serverless environment, you cannot really have a background job. And the reason is because, well, a serverless environment means that your functions are short-lived and stateless. So they are only triggered by events, meaning that there's something that tells this function, hey, you can run now because you just got a request. But if you need a cron job, so something that runs in the background periodically, well, you cannot achieve that with a serverless environment, as they need a long-running process that keeps track of, well, the state of when it should run the job. So since we know serverless is pretty much only triggered by events, well, we can keep the same philosophy and create an endpoint. So you can have a function that is going to process that job. So you could have it under API and then cron, and this could be a post handler. And then you could say, well, every X hours with the GitHub action, send a request to this endpoint and pass in an auth bearer, so an authentication token. And this is crucial because, well, if someone found out about this endpoint, they can just abuse it and heat it up as many times as they want. So for this, what you can do is come here to the root of your repository, and then you can create a .github directory. And then within this directory, you can create a workflows directory. And here is where you're going to specify all of the workflows for your GitHub actions. Now workflows can be used to maybe build artifacts for your project, or well, to run these background jobs, or you could even use them to lint your project or write prettier to all of your code. So on every push or merge to the main branch, well, the options are limitless. In my case, you can create a workflow for the cron job. So in my case, I call the delete expert groups cron and then dot yaml. And then here we can say the name of the workflow. And then you can say on and then you can say schedule and then you can pass in this cron property. And in my case, I use this cron expression, which means that it is going to run every 12 hours. And in fact, if I come here to the official documentation, we have using workflows events that trigger workflows. And here we have the schedule property. So the schedule event allows you to trigger a workflow at a scheduled time. And well, for this, you can use the POSIX cron syntax. So here they have an example on schedule and then cron, and then they pass in the cron expression. So as we can see, it is very straightforward. So let's now take a look at the actual job. Now let's recall, we need to send a request to our endpoint. So for that, we can come here and we can say jobs. So here you can pass in as many jobs as you want. In my case, well, we only need one. Then you can pass in the name or the identifier for the job. Then you can say runs on Ubuntu latest. And then we can say which container. So here we can say Alpine slash Coral. And the reason I'm using this one is because it is very lightweight. So it doesn't take much time for GitHub to create this container and well run the job. Now as for these steps, well, we only have one step, which is sending the request. So for this, we can say name, trigger, delete, expire, group, scrum job, and then we can say run, we say pipe to allow new lines, and then we can say curl, then we pass in the method, so post, then we pass in which endpoint, so the URL, and then we can pass in the header, content type application JSON, and then another header for authorization, and this will be with the bearer format, so we can say bearer, and then we pass in the scheduler auth token. So these two secrets will be added to the remote GitHub repository so that especially we can validate the bearer token in the request to make sure that, well, this is indeed being sent over from GitHub to this allow someone to abuse our endpoint. So with this, we're basically good to go. Now you need to write the actual logic for the route. So for this, since I'm using Next.js on their app and then API, I create this directory cron and then delete expert groups and then I have the actual route. So Next.js uses file-based routing, but well, you would just create an endpoint in whatever framework you're using, even if it's an entirely different language. So here within this route, since we're sending a post request, I export an asynchronous function post. We take in the next request and well, we return a response. So here I have a logger, so you can log this for checking later in your database if something went wrong. And here I have starting cron job to delete expert groups. Then we have the auth header, so we get the authorization header. Then we extract the bearer token. So for this, I'm using sod, so sed.string, then starts with, we know bearer tokens must be prefixed with bearer, and then we can say save parse, and we pass in the auth header, and then we check for its validity. If not, well, for one, if so, 
then we can move on and get the token and then we check for equality for the store token so in my case here in my environment variables i have this one which is just token for development purposes this suffices but obviously you're going to have a secure one for your actual production environment and then well if it's not equal then for one because well invalid token and then starting from here you can run your actual logic for the job so in my case since it is just deleting expert groups then i invoke this function which just runs this sql so pretty basic and well once this is done then i log this as well and finally i respond with a status of 200 and now this is pretty much it you can pretty much push this to github and it is going to handle it for you automatically well you need to make sure to add the secret keys but that's just in the settings tab of your repository so it should be very straightforward but what about testing it i mean sure you can push it over to github over and over again every time you make a change maybe it is not working the way you intended to well for that instead of as i said pushing to the github repository every single time you can use a utility library here which is act so run your github actions locally and as we can see well the benefit is you get a fast feedback and a local task runner so how does it work well act reads your github actions from github and then workflows and determines the set of actions that need to be run so it uses the docker api to either pull or build the necessary images as defined in your workflow files and find Finally, determines the execution path based on the dependencies that were defined. So here you can install it, and I believe it is just, uh, let me check here my history so you can just say curl then the protocol https and then well you just point to the install.sh and then you pipe it over to bash so that way once you have it installed you can just say act and then you can pass in the secret file because well it requires these two secret environment variables so the url and the bearer so you can say secret file dot env and here when you run this it is going to do everything locally and make sure that your workflow doesn't throw an error of course now if you're testing this locally you do not have a server somewhere well you need to use ngrok why because this is going to run in a container and so well the network of the container differs from the host machine so you can install ngrok so you can search it up online so ngrok this one right here that is going to expose your port to basically the internet so once you have ngrok installed all you need to do is say let me show you so here you say ngrok and then http and then you can pass in the port to where your server is listening and as we can see here it is now to the public so you can access this right here so it forwards your port now you can copy this paste it in your environment variable and once you have that you must pass in the secret and once you have this too pretty much all you need to do is run this command so we can say act secret file then .env, and as we can see it is going to start downloading the images and creating the container and once it does as we can see it says job succeeded and if i come here to my terminal we get starting cron job to delete expired groups and then we get the query from kisily and then deleted zero expired groups so as we can see, this is all you need to do. The only complicated part is your actual job logic, but setting it up is as easy as it could get. So this now wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next one.